Inside each and every one of us is something more potent, more powerful than any drug. It's called the will to survive. What does it take for you to race? I just love to ride my bike. No longer confined to Earth, now we had learned to fly. He's a man transformed. He's recovered from cancer and turned into bloody Superman. Why are you so obsessed with this? Why are you not obsessed with this? He wins and wins and he celebrates. He meets the president. He gets more sponsors, more money, more fame. The man is a cheat. I'm the most tested athlete on the face of the planet. I have never tested positive for performance enhancing drugs. He is transforming your little Eurosport into a globally significant brand. If he's cheating in the races, then he's cheating on us as well. I will not be brought down. We're all on the program. I didn't sign up for this. He will attack anyone who steps out of line. I have the money and the power to destroy you. I've never tested positive for performance enhancing drugs. Wow, where did this movie come from? This is turning into a very weird awards season because we have films like this and Pawn Sacrifice coming totally out of left field uh, to, I think, be, hopefully, they look like they deserve to be. It depends how strong their uh, awards campaigns are, but they look like they deserve to be uh, you know, like front runners, like very strong contenders for the awards race. And we might have a situation where there are just too many good films being made. And I think that this is going to hopefully call attention to the over politicization of the awards season because I worry if films like Pawn Sacrifice and the program here can effectively compete in something, uh, an arena that's so politicized and where people have so much at stake, literally in terms of money and careers, uh, that a little film like this, you know, can't quite get through the crowd. And it's interesting because that's kind of what the program is about, right? Cheating in order to remain effective uh, and competitive in a broken system. And also with the FIFA scandal also looming over this. I think this is a very interesting time for this movie indeed. It looks very well made, uh, which is so exciting. Same thing with Pawn Sacrifice, like really well-crafted films. Uh, and I think that the, um, the Lance Armstrong story is a fascinating story uh, that's ripped from the headlines. And sometimes when you make a movie about something like that so close to the event, it seems a little TV movie-ish. But this one, uh, I think, seems to effectively rise above that. I think uh, not only because of the talent involved, which we'll get to in a moment, but the cinematography is really quite impressive. Uh, with that shot when they're coming over the uh, the hill uh, on the on one of the races uh, with the mountains behind them, I was like, wow, that's movie quality. That's really good. Although Working Title is behind this, and Working Title is very good at launching awards campaigns, so I hope that this film benefits from that. Uh, it doesn't have a, a U.S. release date yet, uh, but hopefully, I, I can't imagine it wouldn't release in time to compete, because if it's going to hit overseas uh, in the fall, it's gonna, it can't wait until next year to compete. It has to at least get a limited release in the United States because it can't have a year between when it debuts uh, uh, overseas and then when it becomes a domestic release here in the United States to compete for award season. Now let's talk about the talent involved. This is like a who's who of who should have a better career. I love every actor in this movie and I'm so impressed. I'm hoping that Ben uh, Foster uh, is finally going to get to where he belongs in his career. I mean, I've loved him since 310 to Yuma, where he stole the show uh, as a member of Russell Crowe's criminal gang. He was amazing in that movie. He's done a lot of good work. I'm sure each and every one of you has a favorite Ben Foster performance. He's a really talented actor. But unfortunately these days, he gets more attention for dating Robin Wright uh, than his work. Uh, now, he also is in the upcoming Warcraft film playing uh, Medivh, which is like a really important role. Uh, and so hopefully that will help him as well. But I think movies like this hopefully will also buoy his career. He's incredibly talented as an actor. Maybe he just had to grow into his career, but uh, he's never really had a box office hit, especially where he was the lead. So that makes me a little bit nervous for this film 
from not only a box office perspective, but an awards perspective? Can it compete with a, co a competition that has flashier uh, contenders, right? The, the usuals, right? Uh, same with Tobey Maguire. These guys have to go up against like Michael Fassbender, uh, you know, Brad Pitt, DiCaprio, you know, the usual suspects uh, that are like almost guaranteed nominations. You know, it's much easier in the female categories where they have to like search desperately for ways to fill the category. There's always a plethora of strong male performances each year and we have unfortunate casualties each year. And I worry about Ben Foster's ability to get to the front of the pack. Um, but he's not the only impressive talent here. Chris O'Dowd, very strong actor. He's, uh, of course, everybody knows him from his comedic work uh, because of Bridesmaids, etc. But I think he's a very strong dramatic actor. I got the chance to see him in uh, of, Mice, of Mice and Men with James Franco on Broadway. I also actually saw Ben Foster on Broadway uh, with Orphans, uh, with Alec Baldwin, and he was very good there as well. And Chris O'Dowd was excellent as Lenny in of Mice of Men. And so I really am excited to see him be able to show his dramatic uh, skills here. But then also you've got uh, Lee Pace, uh, who had the unfortunate, uh, you know, role of uh, a very poor Marvel villain in Guardians of the Galaxy, if you can even recognize him under all of his, uh, his makeup. But he's a very talented actor, loved him. He was one of my favorite characters in the Hobbit trilogy uh, as the Elven King. Uh, but also, uh, Jesse Plemons is here in this film as the other uh, cyclist that uh, you see Lance Armstrong threatening. I love Jesse Plemons. I loved him uh, in Breaking Bad. Uh, he, of course, was uh, up for one of the lead roles in Star Star Wars didn't get it, uh, but I think he's also someone who's on the cusp of stardom and deserves to get his big break. Ben Foster's getting it with Warcraft, so Jesse Plemons, considering how many big movies, franchise movies they're making these days, his name, his number's got to be in there somewhere. Uh, but he's actually in the upcoming Black Mass film. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of Jesse Plemons, I think, because of his work in Breaking Bad, and I hope that his star just continues to rise, and he never, never quite not makes it. Like, Lee Pace is weird, because he's, and, and uh, Ben Foster are kind of like the future versions of Jesse Plemons, you know, like they never did quite make it, so I hope that Jesse Plemons uh, doesn't share their fate, and I hope they eventually escape their own fate as well. Uh, but I do worry, because they didn't do so well in the long run, I worry about if they might hold this movie back uh, from in terms of getting an attention, both with the public, with the moviegoers, and with award season. But what a trailer! What a trailer. And I'm curious, does this look as good to you? And do you think movies like Pawn Sacrifice and the program can compete during awards season, which is already ridiculously crowded? Uh, and if they can't, do you think that does symbol that the awards uh, s system is broken? All right, thank you so much for tuning into my review. Uh, and you can check out some other episodes right now.